Great. So, welcome, uh, welcome to this webinar session. My name is Laura Hill, and uh, I head up Cloud Essentials here in the UK. Um, this webinar today is is really part of our drive to help our clients make sound decisions, I suppose, on uh, on how to manage their ever expanding content in Microsoft 365 um, and across other platforms, actually, kind of in and around their Microsoft ecosystem knowing that backup is a really important part of that. So today in this um, this session, we're going to give some context, firstly, as to why backup matters. We're going to look a little bit about where it fits into retention and, and more content management strategy within Microsoft 365. But the bulk of the session is really going to be about kind of food for thought, really, on creating your specification, you know, what to consider when you're looking at backup solutions. And some of those must have elements of, of a modern solution that uh, will hopefully serve your business for many years to come. So I'm joined today by my colleague, Nathan Collins from AffPoint. Uh, AffPoint are a vendor um, that we've built a very solid partnership with over many years. And the, the AffPoint, the whole platform, has really brought a lot of value to our clients, whether that's automating migrations, really getting a grip over, over teams and governance, um, curbing the cost of growth in SharePoint, and of course, peace of mind from, from backup solutions um, as well. So, so Nathan's going to join me for the second half of this session. The first half, we're going to present some considerations um, in quite a conceptual way. And then the second half, we're going to grill our point really on some uh, some really pertinent cap capabilities that we think um, are important when we're looking at backup solutions. So please um, use the comments, uh, the Q&A, if you wanted to ask any questions um, as we go, and then we'll, we'll make time to cover them off. So just very quickly for some context for those who don't know us already, we're a Microsoft partner around the area of content management. So we're really helping organizations to mature their approach to how they're managing their data in Microsoft 365, reducing the risk profile of that content, migrating, managing that content in a, as cost efficient way as possible over time and through business change and, and ultimately opening up the value of all that data so that you can surface it to your to your business advantage. So that's kind of the um, the place that we're coming from as a as a partner in Cloud Essentials. So we're not here to preach to you today really why you need a backup solution. You know, this session is more about helping you make uh, savvy decisions when you are choosing a backup solution. So we're kind of working on three founding um, assumptions. Um, the first that you obviously don't think your organization is immune to ransomware, you know, and that's that really is the number one reason to have a backup. Um, you know, you are perhaps seeing that rise in cybercrime, uh, ransomware attacks are certainly on the up. Um, and chances are you're generating more content than ever before, as well as you're collaborating, you're sharing um, perhaps through through Teams and you're expanding use of Microsoft 365. So there's more collaboration going on, meaning there's potentially more exposure. Um, and perhaps you're also acknowledging that smaller to medium sized organizations are more actually more vulnerable and being attacked on a daily basis. You know, statistics from from cybercrime analysts really back this up and, and we've seen it firsthand as well. Um, and, you know, if you're not a corporate giant, if you're not a government organization, a ransomware attack on your business is probably not going to make the news, um, but you can still fall victim to it and it could still impact your brand. It could cost you financially. And at the end of the day, you're going to have to explain your position to your clients, to your employees, to uh, to crime agencies, to the regulators um, if you've if you've experienced an attack. And you know, essentially, criminals want to, they want to remove your access to your content, they want to then copy it, delete it, um, modify it, encrypt it. And many ransomware events can play out very, very slowly. And that complexity of unpicking the sequence of an attack and therefore the restoration process can be very, very time consuming, um, especially when SharePoint and OneDrive um, are involved and, and maybe you've got versioning at play, etc. 
So we're taking that as a given. Um, the second assumption that we're making, you know, is that you are doing what you can to prevent data loss. Um, you know, you've no doubt got an ever maturing uh, security program around Microsoft 365 to minimize your vulnerability. You know, hopefully you're using Microsoft Defender to its maximum capability, uh, you know, particularly around email, identities, endpoints, you know, managing sign-ons, etc. And maturing uh, and monitoring that maturity against your secure score and, and kind of proactively um, working through incremental adoption and all that fine tuning that you need to do. You know, the tools, the tools are there, the very powerful tools are there and you'll be paying for them, you know, with your Microsoft licenses. It's really a case of, of utilizing them. And that's very much our role as your as a, a Microsoft partner um, to make sure that first and foremost, you know, you are hammering those features in Microsoft 365 um, to, to bolster your security. But you'll also perhaps be thinking about this um, through a sort of prevention of, um, of, of risk through a, a lens of, you know, where is our highest risk content? Where is our highest value content? Where are those honeypots of highly sensitive data? Therefore, where do we need to be prioritizing locking that down? Um, you know, not just from external threats, but also risky internal user activity and, and perhaps also to, to uphold um, compliance within your organization. Third assumption here is that you believe your data is your responsibility. You know, it's there in black and white in Microsoft shared responsibility model, model um, where they actually explicitly recommend that you do get a third party backup. Um, but beyond that, you know, you'll be working to some kind of service level agreements in your business on the availability of content and, um, you know, your, your internal playbook for a situation where maybe you need to react to the loss of content and restoration. Um, and fundamentally, you know, the onus is on you for that. So just want to take um, a very quick sidestep to talk to retention because it's a question that we get asked a lot um, because of the work that we do with our clients and their, their broader uh, content strategy within Microsoft 365 in terms of the lifecycle management and also because we work quite a lot with regulated industries um, so you know how how we're executing on retention and disposition is is often a hot topic um, so I just want to tackle kind of what's the difference here um, and what I would say is that you need backup because despite all of the prevention efforts that we've just talked to, you know, you consider that your content still might be at risk of being lost, stolen, corrupted, misplaced. And you want to arm yourself with restoration capability to get back to business as usual as quickly as possible. You need retention capability because you need to control the length of time that you need to keep content. So you need to control um, the preservation, you need to control the availability of it, and you probably need to prove its immutability. So if you're in any way regulated, you will not only need to arm yourself for retention and, and secure storage, but probably also quite a long list of features around policy management around defensible deletion, around search and discovery, around evidential workflows. Uh, so both backup and retention solutions preserve content, but for completely different reasons. And therefore the thinking process around backup and retention strategy should be quite separate. But at some point they do have to join up uh, because your backup solution must not compromise your retention strategy and your compliance obligations. Um, so, yeah, because I suppose um, backup by definition is a copy of your content. You know, it's got to fall in line with any governance um, policies um, that you have in play. And if you're struggling with um, getting to grips with retention strategies and and the concepts of how, of how retention works in Microsoft 365, then we've got quite a good um, blog piece and, and webinar session um, on demand um, that we can post here and we can certainly help you um, figure, figure that out. So I'm going to move now into thinking about ideas to consider around your backup solution. Um, and to start with, you know, backup isn't new. 
coverage or maybe of Microsoft 365, of may, maybe other SaaS platforms um, for you, that might be new. Um, but you will have no doubt learned some lessons from the past and they will be very valid as a baseline. So we would certainly encourage you to uh, use that as your starting point um, and, and look at what's wrong with what you've got or, or what lessons have you learned from um, from your past. So, you know, maybe the current solution that you have ended up turning your full time IT administrator into a full time backup administrator. So ease of use is going to be on your list. You know, if you're acquisitive, so mergers and acquisitions are happening and in the past your backup wasn't flexible enough and it didn't work across uh, multiple locations, that's going to be important to you. Maybe you've actually had to do a restore process in the past and you know you ended up having to work with an entire a bucket of data and it just wasn't granular enough um you know you're not going to tolerate that in terms of of microsoft 365 not when you think about all those structures and um, around sharepoint and onedrive maybe you've had to call in vendor support in the past and sat in call queues only to get inadequate responses um you know support is going to be on on your list of criteria and we'd also suggest, you know, really looking at um, the difference between traditional and um, more modern cloud backup solutions. You know, lots of uh, traditional legacy on-premises backup providers do extend coverage to Microsoft 365 and, and maybe other SaaS platforms. Um, but I think we want to really encourage a high level of awareness as to how they function and I'd suggest that it's, yeah, it's really that recovery process that differentiates um, in this situation. You're not necessarily that ability to capture copies in a traditional backup sense. It's that recovery. Um, you know, recovery of Office 365 is very different to recovery of on-premises workloads, mainly due to the very dynamic nature of cloud. You know, all those sophisticated features that make collaboration happen, like versioning and, and chat, they all cause a lot of complexity in the recovery process process. Um, so solutions built in the cloud, specifically for Microsoft Cloud, um, have a very, very different uh, recovery architecture. So just caution, I suppose, the comparison apples for apples um, when looking at, at that capability from a technical perspective and also um, from the, the sort of commercial modeling and how that is that is different. Uh, certainly cloud backup has created a a whole new generation of, of vendors and it's a very competitive space in terms of functionality. Um, so you can really make sure that you are getting value for money, um, especially if your preference is around OPEX spend and not absorbing a lot of infrastructure and, and management cost. So something that we would really, really recommend that you do is take an up to date inventory of the coverage that you need for backup. You know, the highest level will be your Office 365 workloads, SharePoint teams, OneDrive, Exchange, etc. But the devil is in the detail, we promise you this. Um, you know, for example, are you using public folders? We worked uh, with a shipping company and they've got a public folder for every single container and um, so much complexity around that. Are you using shared mailboxes? How are you using things like in-place holds and what imp impact does that have on the backup? What about things like OneNote? What about things like planner tasks? What about any development work going on around Microsoft 365 um, as you're really using the the platform to its full capability. Um, you know, some of our clients in legal verticals building a lot of automation and workflows and reporting using Power Platform. You know, you're going to need to restore that if needs be. Um, certainly, if anyone is using SharePoint as a document management system, you'll be very concerned with any custom metadata being used and, and any custom templates being used. So, yeah, really um, build your inventory of the coverage you need, knowing what you're going to need in a restoration situation. And look at it now and also, you know, cast your mind to what you might need in the future. You know, perhaps you now have a cloud first strategy and you foresee adopting more SaaS platforms. You know, what coverage are you going to need? Uh, and you might also need to look at content, not just from where it's located, but rather that content ownership as more and more, um, certainly with Microsoft 365, you're able to, to organize your content um, through its ownership. Um, 
So perhaps you have groupings of users that you're going to need to containerize um, differently based on their function or their or their region. Um, and maybe you just need to to be aware of any granularity that you that you need there. As I mentioned, we work quite a lot within regulated industries. We are uh, quite a specialist partner in the Microsoft ecosystem of partners around their purview and compliance and, and governance. Uh, so this is certainly um, an area that needs to be thought of in terms of, of um, capability that you might need in your backup strategy. Certainly, some of the global organizations that we work with need to look at backup through a lens of multiple geolocations that have very different compliance requirements. Data sovereignty might be an issue. Uh, you know, we've seen cases that where the regulators might directly be stipulating certain requirements. Um, we certainly work with some financial clients in regions that are actually only just being permitted by regulators to even move to the cloud. You know, so there's a lot of process in decision making, a lot of risk assessment in favor of, um, of backup, but also a lot to consider uh, around meeting compliance requirements. And certainly as you mature in how you're using Microsoft 365 to manage sensitive data, you'll want to be assured that any work that you do there in terms of classification, labeling and, and policies to do with retention, etc., are all respected by the backup. Um, and also, yeah, just just making sure that your backup is is not hindering things, you know, like, for example, the right to be forgotten. This is a, it's a really key one here. You know, those assurances potentially around the destruction of data, um, you know, looking at how you execute on a, a data privacy scenario, for example, where you actually have to remove data to honor that right to be forgotten um, and also understanding how that situation might play out if, if that content is under retention policy um, within Microsoft 365. So, again, if that's is something that you're likely to be grappling with, then we can certainly help you there. But also just maybe not the, the defensible deletion of certain files, but also maybe um, how you need the, the backup to perform around entire SharePoint sites or, or teams with proof of destruction um, or retention. Um, and also maybe how you need the backup solution to, um, to perform when it comes to giving evidence of audit trails and, and any changes made um, to the auditors. Another important area of, of thinking is around change. You know, it's important to, to look ahead at how your business will change and what impact that might have on the backup strategy that you take, knowing that nothing stands still. Uh, you know, your data footprint doesn't stand still. It's, it's ever expanding. It's ever moving. Um, your business environment is changing. Regulatory environment is changing. The technologies that you're using um, constantly evolving. So yeah, look at growth, look at requirements, perhaps around um, if you're engaging in mergers and acquisition activity, being flexible to cover multiple entities, subsidiaries, um, divestiture, if, if maybe that's something that you deal with. Um, how is a backup solution going to cope with expansion of data and expansion of users and any scale that you need? How is your backup strategy going to be um, affected by additional platforms that you that you're looking to to bring in, especially SaaS platforms, and also the management side as well? So, how do you need to accommodate administration of this solution, perhaps at a very local level? Um, you know, perhaps using delegated management structures. Certainly not all administrative functions are equal, um, you know, so you're not going to want to be giving backup administrators full whack access um, to what can be e-discovery type capability to do restore work um, and inadvertently giving them access to all of the content itself. So, yeah, look at that, that management and how you're going to need a solution to, to flex to your specific requirements. So. That brings us to um, the the kind of sh shift now in this second half of the webinar from, I suppose, very conceptual considerations to take a deeper look at very specific capabilities that we think are important and that our clients 
tell us are important um, as they've they've looked at backup solutions for Microsoft 365. And we certainly believe that building a, a specification for backup um, should should factor in uh, multiple areas of functionality and that you should be very demanding in those, um, you know, not just looking at core technical functionality, but also looking at vendor assurances um, and value for money in general, you know, sometimes the most compelling differentiators of, of platforms out there can live in these, these areas. So Nathan is going to join us now from our point where we're going to zoom in on, on four or five of these kind of labels here. Um, but actually, before we do so, I want to incorporate some of your views to, to steer the conversation um, that we're going to have next with Nathan. So I just want to invite some participation um, to basically capture from you what it is that you're looking for, um, you know, what it is, it is it that you consider important when you look at a backup solution? Um, and then we can just drive a bit more of the conversation from there. So if you're up for it, um, I want to use a Slido here whereby we can capture from you your thoughts. So using your phone, um, or using going to slido.com and just using this reference number here, this 108 9090. Um, please give us two to three words that kind of encapsulate what it is you're looking for in a cloud backup solution. You know, what is critical functionality for you? Um, if you were to uh, be gearing up to test a backup solution, if you were gearing up to speak with a vendor or a partner or Microsoft about, um, about backup, what would be the things that you would raise in conversation. Um, so then we can we can talk to those a little bit more and make sure that we're staying relevant to the things that are important to you, as well as um, calling out two or three things um, from our experience. So just pause for a moment and let this um, and let this this populate for a couple of moments. And Slido is pretty cool. It will detect certain similarities with its AI so that what appears in the core is where most of you are referencing. That is a yeah, key feature. Um, so the core is, is going to be the consolidated view of what is the most important from this um, participant list, 47 of us. Um, and if it's on the fringe, I'm sorry, it's on the fringe, but you're, you're <laughs> using on maybe pointing out a few things that are appearing in the middle. Yeah. So I'll I'll take whilst we you got you eight people um, typing there. Um, so I'm regional um, director, um, UK and Ireland and South Africa for Appoint, and uh, I look after specifically mid market SMB customers as well as all routes to um, to market. Okay, so been in, in the industry for I don't know 20 plus years. Um, this is my third vendor ride. Um, so I've I'm I'm going to bring in that wealth of experience when we get through this slide up. Price and cost. It's coming out with capitals as well. So um, there's a quite a few of you um, on that. Ease of restore. Nice, nice. Anything else you want to pick out there, Laura? User friendly, technical friendly, secure backup solution. Well, you'd hope. Uh, I used used to really love the analogy. You paid for backup, not necessarily the restore. Yeah, I think there's some on ticketing, um, support, things like that. So maybe more of the service wrapper as well. Hidden granularity. costs again relating to price, granularity. OK, we so, can let this roll, but let's let's hone in then, um, Nathan, on a few of these. Where do you want to where do you want to start? Maybe that's security. Should we go hit that middle one straight up? Yeah, look, um. The five I had picked out so on your next slide, I really love the three axes um, because it's very easy to, to believe that when you're talking about clouds and native data management providers that um, they all interface the same APIs, they all um, are affected negatively or positively by Microsoft's um, funneling and, and throttling capabilities. But the reality is there are some key areas that massive differentiation takes place. So the one looking at security specifically, um, uh, there was one of the um, the labels that you've got around warranty assurances and SLAs. I think that's very appropriate to to security. Um, 
So um, from our perspective, we refer to our platform as, as the confidence platform. Uh, and that platform is designed to meet the most stringent um, requirements, industry requirements. So um, we've got three levels of uh, accreditation around ISO 27001. So not only are we using Azure data centers, eight regional data centers, we also have uh, ISO certification for process administration and configuration. So uh, ourselves, we got certification on top of Azure certification for ISO and make sure that you know when you're taking data and putting it into our tenants to protect Office 365 data um, and other applications in the cloud, that you're doing so with the most um, stringent industrial uh, standards in mind. But also on top of that, it's it's things such as um, uh, so coverage, warranty, um, and um, and that goes into insurance as well. So let's go through some of them um, because we're yeah. using a, because of the stack. 99.9% uh, of our um, uh, uptime is is guaranteed, so we know that our environment is going to be scaled to that. Another really important thing, of course, because we are native in in Microsoft Cloud, is um, is is the fact that we are actually using that stack, and in that stack, the the Microsoft Azure PaaS platform, which we are sat on top of, we've turned on anti malware intrusion detection and prevention. It's by standards, so when you're consuming as a subscription. Um, through Cloud Central's, of course, um, you you know that everything that is done is done so with uh, the the built-in um, Azure um, sta security standards. Mm. And yeah, and that's something that we've I know we've come across quite a lot is clients wanting to go very very deep into this stuff. So um, yeah, having you know direct mandate need backup, needs to have these um, accreditations, um, you know, really, really grilling us, really grilling our point, really grilling Microsoft on on those standards and those assurances and having to evidence those. So I know that it's not something um, taken casually in terms of, you know, how we present the solution. You know, there's organizations that we work with who have to go very, very deep um, into this stuff. And it's certainly something as well that we see quite, our point are quite progressive with keeping on top of as well and um, and reacting to client requirements and, and changes in the regulation and um, things going on in, in the environment as well. Yeah, not looking good. Uh, off piece, you've got audit trails and ticketing. Uh, look, by default, we uh, integrate with SIEM providers so we can trap out to um, all of those sort of uh, providers. So you can actually consolidate your uh, what our, our points doing into other um, systems that in, 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 incorporate other sort of data volumes. Um, you know, restore. I was going to come on to this later. So yeah. we've got granularity in there. We've got user friendly technical. Uh, finding data. Um, so we've got um, this thing called AppPoint Virtual Assistant, AVA, and that sits within Teams, which let's face it, and we were actually doing this in Teams now. Um, we're pivoting uh, from Outlook into Teams in terms of the primary productivity tool for communication and collaboration. So AVA, as uh, our front end, if you will, to our data management platform, um, that sits in Teams as well. There's a little icon that will be on the bottom left-hand corner of your um, Teams sidebar, and you just click on that, and this bot wakes up, and it will ask you, what would you like me to do? Recover, um, find, search, um, a version um, option. So basically, on your input into AVA, uh, AVA will then go and start to look for our index and find a file version. And it, it's not just in an email or OneDrive. It's anything that that user has access to within Office 365. So Again, that simplifies and takes IT out of uh, recovery because, uh, again, that just gets into the del delays and the experience of a user in regards to the granular, you know, inconvenient restores um, that that is required. So, and, and Ava is going to be a point of additional investment as well. So, right now, there's a lot of um, the metadata that uh, Ava can start to look at. You know, but it's mostly date, time, file name, um, who sent it, whether you've got access to it. Those are the key things. But going forward, as we start to put more artificial intelligence in there, um, we'll, we'll be looking more at um, objectivity of what that file was. Um, you know, 
keyword search regards to a particular client name, etc. We'll be looking within the data to see if that's referenced in there. So we'll be enriching um, the the results that an indiv individual is going to find, of course, assuming they have uh, the relevant um, uh, direct or indirect permissions to that file. So that covers an awful lot of the uh, uh, the recovery elements. But going back into an sorry, Laura. No, I was just going to say. Um, in terms of the you know tackling price and cost can i um yeah can can we maybe steer the conversation there because i think this is a a value for money conversation yeah. um i would say that it's a buyer's market it's a competitive market so you know as an organization looking to buy a backup solution you are in the driving seat to be very demanding about the capability that you're getting and ensuring that you're getting value for money. And that's why the theme of this webinar today is what it is, you know, demand more um, because platforms like Avpoint have got an absolute wealth of capability um, and they can really make your budget go very, very far. Um, yeah. But also, you know, to look at that, have that value for money um, consideration a bit more longer term, um, you know, and, and and looking at where that vendor is going and what they're doing and how how that can um, weave into your content management strategy and where you're heading with cloud, you know, as opposed to just looking at a point solution for the here and now for the year ahead. Um, so, yeah, Nathan, maybe you could talk to that a little bit. I know there were some points in our, um, our kind of uh, decision making yeah, yeah. tree. If I can move to that slide, I've oh, taken yeah. a snapshot on it just in case this goes. Um, okay. But um, yeah, talk to us a little bit more around value for money. Um, to tackle right. the kind of price cost. No, got it. Um, that that this is very off piste, everyone. So we didn't uh, plan for price. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> so let me add a little bit. Number one, um, we are Microsoft um, through and through. Um, the reality is we we are sitting in ourselves in Microsoft Azure. Um, we're the fourth largest ISV vendor from a consumption Azure consumption perspective. What does that mean, and why should you care? Economies of scale. We are hundreds of millions of dollars in deep every year in our bill. Our bill sits in um, Azure and our platform sits on Azure. Our cost per doing stuff is lower than almost everyone else in our marketplace. That cost is important because, of course, our customers, um, potentially yourselves, are going to want the keenest price per uh, user, per terabyte stored, whatever you want to, to break it down as. So we got the deepest pockets. We got the most consumption. We get the best pricing from, from Microsoft. Um, so we're born in, in cloud as well. So we are very used to, to working with customers. Uh, so we know that subscription costs monthly um, are really important to them. So we're up against some competitors that um, will give you a great three-year deal, but at the end of three years, they'll go back to the um, the list price and not the purchase price. That's very naughty. We, we find very often going up against um, customers who got a renewal bill that's shot up by 80, 90 percent versus the initial purchase. Yes, inflation is a thing these days, but uh, we're always taking into consideration the contracted terms at the original outset. So uh, for us, it's only the inflation, not a function of the list price when you come back out to do your renewal. Can't take under, no, sorry, you can't underestimate how important that is when you're starting to think about data on the multi-year uh, time frame. Because, you know, literally you shouldn't be doing this every two or three years and then going to a brand new uh, organization because again come that's not necessarily price but operational costs increase if you're doing this every couple of years um going back to the microsoft thing 250 petabytes of plus of data is already in our azure uh, data centers we have eight of them globally by the way and when i say data center i'm talking about region so each region has triangulated data centers so when you get that level of economy of scale you're going to get a very keen price and you're also going to get very good service levels OK, so you're going you're gonna to get really good um, deals for our channel. Now, let's talk about marketplace Microsoft as well. And, and, and Cloud Essentials are a very big market uh, place in Microsoft um, organization, too. You're going to negotiate potentially if you're of a size with Microsoft and they'll be talking to you about consumption micro, uh, Microsoft as your marketplace credits, Mac, M-A-C-C. We're on the Microsoft Marketplace and you can use credits to consume Azure. 
uh, our point, my, my bad. So again, private offers or, or direct through the marketplace. We always recommend private offers. Uh, you get the best deal and value and it's a traditional negotiation cycle with cloud essentials. And then you can consume using Mac, Microsoft Mac. So if you've got an abundance of Mac and you have to use it, not only are you going to get the best deal with a, an organization of scale and size, but you can also consume credits before they get lost. Um, so that is a, a definitely a recommendation. Um, does that cover enough of um, price and value? Again, use the chat function as well uh, if you want to go in uh, and if you want me to go in a little bit more depth. But again, in three years, always worry about the renewal cost. Economies of scale, uh, I would say, gives us the best ability to provide you with the lowest cost per user or the lowest cost per uh, capacity item. Yeah. Um, we've gone into Thanks, a bunch Nathan. Of I think as well, just you know, from clients that we've worked with, the value for money as well increasing over time because of the direction of travel of the vendor. You know, so the additional coverage that is constantly being added to the backup solution. Um, and also, yeah, just that broader platform. Um, do you want to talk just a little bit yes, to, you know, how, how our point are, are being progressive um, at the moment and, and all the development work around around various platforms? Thank you. I mean, Laura, I was going there myself in my, my so another way of reducing the price point is by um, taking on board a platform that within its code base uh, addresses more point issues. Um, so the reality of the situation is with with our points, we are considered to be a full spectrum data information management platform. Well, why does that matter? We start by taking data off on premise. That's on premise exchange, SharePoint, file structures, um, even other cloud um, storage repositories like Dropbox. It's not Dropbox, but Box. Um, and take that into you know SharePoint Online, uh, OneDrive, and you know all of those other online locations. So that archive platform uses the same code base that, that the other um, technologies for re resilience, as well as um, our governance of teams. You know, who, who isn't on this call um, stressed about how many Teams channels gets created and they never die. Uh, again, we've got technologies and capabilities to manage the complexity and to expire out Teams channels that aren't being maintained to reduce the complexity to the end users as well. But we also get into policies and insights. So what data are we retaining that's of value and important? Um, and then we get into things like um, change management and adoption. So we have a technology called Tigraph, which allows you to then figure out how are my users interfacing with Microsoft 365? Are they using the tools that we should be using? How are they using things like Power Applications, Power Platform? And then we get into another technology that we have called Entrust, so we can start to manage Microsoft tenants very proactively. Um, and if you've got an organization with multiple tenants, it, it starts to get really difficult to maintain standards between tenant at scale. And then records and sense are technologies that we bring out that actively reduce the cost of managing data by expiring them subject to certain, um, you know, prop, um, uh, you know, characteristics, age and so forth and, and lever or it's uh, subject to some sort of compliance retention or it's a license that should be in free pool. Um, and the final thing is that we've brought out a new subsidiary called Maven Point, which is all about the learning and enablement. So not only can we do some pro programmatic things around handling data and, and information, but we can actually also train individuals on how to use the Power Platform, how to use a form, how to interface with teams, how to use CRM, etc. So covering all of that within a single platform. Now, the important thing is think about your project costs rolling out an archive project by way of example, or a learning management system or platform with maybe a uh, accreditation program built in. For us, it's all integrated in AppPoint Online Services, which sits in Azure. It's the same stack. What that means is you have one master services customer agreement. Um, you have one NDA with um, your channel partner with us. You have one statement of work that you can add addendums to um, and one data protection agreement. To, but fundamentally, 99% hasn't changed. Just adding the functionality you need. Now, from an acquisition standpoint, therefore, and it does follow, the more of of app point you consume, the lower the price per user on any individual uh, platform versus any of our competitors. So that squarely, the full spectrum does squarely come back to the cost of providing data management solutions against any one of those, those, those areas where you might have considered a best in, 
in, in um, standard um, individual solution versus a platform play that we provide. That's not to say um, that a, a single standalone solution is better than our point because I'm sure you know, they wouldn't have a business if they were providing a archive solution or a learning management platform solution, but they cannot compete across the provision of a scaled millions of subscribers platform that we have already. And of course, uh, with a thousand developers, we have a very feature rich technology already. So that addresses our full spectrum, that addresses some of the pricing uh, considerations. Um, but I, I do want to make sure, because it is a very good um, you know, additional add on, that we go back to um, the warranty and the service levels. So in cloud, not all solution providers are equal. So as standard, we provide um, you know, 24 by 7, 365 support to any of our customers for any of our channel partners. Um, that's as standard, um, not even negoti negotiated. Um, immutability of storage, because I did notice that was in one of the things mm -hmm. that's our tenant is different to the customer's tenant. It's all um, all the data transfers to us through AE uh, 256. It's TLS 1.3. It's in our tenants. It's not connect. You know, it is connected through specific data points, but it's immutable storage. And the fundamental is it comes down to the insurance levels that we provide into our master customer services level of agreement. 5 million for cyber insurance, 5 million for employer li liability, and 9 million for um, product liability, i.e. a problem with our technology that busts something, uh, takes some data, makes it irreconcilable. So some fundamentally large um, uh, dollar values in there, and they are dollar values uh, associated with if we have a problem with our technology um, that's wrapped in automatically to every contract with customers. Uh, Thanks, Nathan. Price, the last thing on price, so mm -hmm. some customers say we don't want data in Azure, uh, we would like a DR, so we also have this concept of bring your own storage, use your own storage, drag it into AWS if you want, S3 buckets, um, you know, Glacier buckets, stick it to some other data center if you want to present out to us, um, you know, your own storage on premise or in a, uh, you know, data center at lower price, again, all of those things are options. Data sovereignty built in as well, eight global data centers, you've got data center options. Sorry, Laura. Thank you. No, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, I think um, just to finish up, just to zoom in again, I think on, on some of the core technical functionality, one of the, the words that came up was that granularity. And yeah. um, I think, you know, I, I can certainly make a, a, a quite a sweeping statement about granularity in, in the AppPoint platform. But what I would urge you to do is um, you have to explore granularity unique to your environment and your use cases. So what we would suggest as a partner is, um, you know, let's let's talk about exactly how you are using Microsoft 365. Um, what's important? What customizations have you got? What are those real nuances of how um, users are working with it? And um, especially very in very critical areas or where those um, like I mentioned, those honeypots of, of sensitive data are and how you're using uh, labeling, how you're organizing and governing the, the content um, natively in Microsoft. So then we can guide you in the conversation about granularity that you need, um, because that's going to be wholly unique um, to your environment. But all we can say is, is that it is very it's very deep um, in terms of being able to to restore in a very um, sophisticated way. Um, so certainly, if you move forward in in the te into a testing period with a solution like Halfpoint, um, that's where you go deep. Um, you know, make sure you set aside the time to really um, to really explore that area. So I think we have meandered around the word cloud and this kind of um, these these notes here today. Um, so I will just move us along as we wrap up the session. Um, to yeah, just some some key things to that I hope that you will take away from uh, from the time with us now, which is build your specification. Um, take time to do so and then we would urge you to turn that into success criteria you know really put um, solutions through their paces as you perhaps move through into seeing demonstrations and perhaps move through into trial periods etc um, and make sure that um, the solution has everything that you need um, but also just again that theme of planning for future plan for growth plan for change um, certainly something that 
it can trip organizations up um, in their decisions ultimately for for how they're using backup, um, especially with the, you, the direction that you're heading with with Microsoft. Um, put platforms to the test, you know, go deep, get to understand that granularity and what that restoration experience is therefore going to be. Um, look at those vendor credentials and the roadmap and certainly don't just take our word for it, you know, take uh, take some references and also just that consideration of the total cost of ownership. You know, there's um, this is a busy a busy vendor space and there's lots of different um, commercial models and getting that right fit um, for you that aligns with your Microsoft spend, for example, over multiple years, um, we would urge you to, to look at that carefully. So just to wrap up the session with perhaps some practical suggestions um, as to how Cloud Essentials can help you as a partner, um, my contact details are here. Uh, so please feel free to get in touch if you want to have a look at this in any further detail and I can certainly connect you with um, technical colleagues to, to get a bit deeper into the functionality and perhaps a demonstration. Um, we want to put an offer on the table that if you want to move forward into a, a bit of a discovery call, a, a demonstration of the AffPoint solution where we can tune it um, precisely to your requirements, um, then for the, the first five that we deliver at that, we'd love to make a commitment to a um, to, to make a, a, a donation to a charity of, of your choice. Um, and if you don't have one, then we support a, a, a local educational charity that we'd love to contribute to. Um, moving forward from that, maybe a trial, maybe an assisted trial to make sure that you're really ticking off that success criteria and exploring when the time is right. Um, but also just to mention um, in our partnership with, with Microsoft, some of these areas around security and compliance, there are assessments available um, to you that might be helpful uh, to understand your, your, where you are on that secure score, where you are on that compliance score and how these things might converge with your decisions on um, a backup strategy. Uh, some more resources coming your way. We have a, an ebook around um, backup and making your decisions on a backup solution um, and also various blog pieces as I've mentioned today on um, retention um, as that's a quite a hot topic in alignment with backup. And as Nathan mentioned, um, yeah, AffPoint R and ISV approved on Azure Marketplace, um, so you can facilitate that purchase of of a backup um, via AffPoint to offset against any outstanding consumption commitment, um, which can be a really great way of getting even more uh, value return um, from a, a subscription um, if you purchase that way. So, thank you, Nathan. Um, for being open to a, a session that could could go anywhere <laughs> so i hope that's been uh, been useful for you and um we'll we'll close up there i'm just going to check there wasn't any more questions that had come on the chat i don't think i had um no okay all right you've got my contact details if you want to look at anything any further we'll say thanks and goodbye